The very last section for TA Southbounders on the North Island is the town of Wakani to Wellington. Part of my pronunciation. Again, as I showed you in the last video, we didn't actually stay in that town proper. We had about a mile or two to walk to officially get into that town. Just was easier to break it into these types of segments. So this is a previous clip that I showed you in the last video. The town of Wakani, again, part of the pronunciation, has grocery stores, um, beautiful park benches. So when you continue your hike past that area, you junction to kind of this river, kind of farmland track walk. Very well graded, very well maintained. Um, you can hold a very standard pace on this piece of track. There is a holiday park about a mile or two down this track um, outside of the town itself. So if your miles link up, you can stay there. It's close to this bridge area here. And as you continue along, you'll continue along this track and ultimately cross this bridge. And this bridge will signify when you start starting to get closer to the beach portion of the day. You do have about another mile to two miles, three miles to go through the kind of these coastal walkways, coastal communities. Again, you're starting to get into very built up communities. Um, a lot of infrastructure there. This sign I just kept in because it amused me. So a lot of them are very well maintained and you can hold a standard pace. So you get to this beach portion and this beach is going to be a long stretch anywhere from seven to nine miles of your day and it fluctuates from beach coastal walking to kind of a little bit of inland walking which I'll talk about later <clears throat> but if you're feeling a hankering for some food there is a beach called Ratoa Beach again part of my pronunciation this is why I kept this sign in here Ramanudi Beach again my pronunciation is not great I apologize for that so you continue your beach walk on um, if you went in off track to get some food and you start this inland piece of the track and it's kind of confusing through here so stay stay aware there are a lot of junctions there's bike path there's kind of this gravel track two track and it kind of zigzags through there so just ve stay very aware as you go through there because there are a lot of junctions and ultimately this will deposit you onto the next beach portion this is a smaller beach portion um, you quickly get done with it and end up on this walkway into this next little pocket of town again food is accessible a lot this day of the packet karakia part of my pronunciation that town um, it doesn't really have a whole lot of places to stay it does have food accessible you have a little bit of connector track to this piece called the escarpment track and the escarpment track is a big highlight for a lot of ta southbounders in this section because it is just epically beautiful you climb these bluffs very sharp ascents and descents um, but you have broad sweeping views along the entire ocean and you can actually see the south island um, not that mountain range the one prior in the distance Again, it is a tight track and it is very populated with tourists, so just be um, courteous and be aware as you go along that portion. There are a few washout sections on here, and there was one in particular that I wanted to point out because it's the hardest portion of your day. Again, I don't know how it's going to be in the 2023-24 season, but there was a portion of the trail that was closed and it made you do this very, very sharp, more sharply than you'd been doing, ascent. This is the portion that was closed and it was... I think the sketchiest part, in bad weather, I wouldn't have felt conf confident doing it. Again, use your own preference, best judgment here. And this is just more of the flavor of the escarpment track. As you see, it drops down into those valleys or those bridges that goes up and up and over the next very steep ascent. Once you finish that up, you start getting into more connector track and the flavor of your day will be mostly community slash bike path slash kind of very small pockets of just coastal walking not full beach walking but coastal bike path next to it it is very well signed through here again there's a lot of twists and turns but this portion starts to get way more well signed than the previous portion you were in so you continue this and you have these little small pockets of communities that you pass through the first one's plimerton and plimerton you could junction off to get some food and not a whole lot of amenities there's a water fountain that i just pointed out i don't believe there's camping in this town so if you are planning on camping if you go past this town you have to push into the town of polario again part of my pronunciation that town does have motels more of a full service town and that was our goal for the day it has a very popular campground that i'll talk about as we get closer to the end but once you leave there you start more of your kind of quote unquote sprawl walk a lot of a lot of road walk a lot of sidewalk walk and ultimately a lot of bike path so very standard pace you can hold it and this is the entrance to that town i was mentioning earlier papa Peru. part of my pronunciation 
They have a big countdown. They have a big new world, both grocery stores. As I said, they have multiple motels, but most hikers will decide to go to this place called Camp Elston. And Camp Elston is kind of a holiday park, privatized holiday park, I would say. You have a little bit of connector track out of the town itself to get there. And this campground is popular with TA hikers because it is one of the cheaper options. This is it right here, Camp Elston. I kept this piece of clip in here because I just thought it amusing that there's a horse walking up while it says don't touch it. This is the camping section. The camping section is actually not that wide. There were like eight tents there when we stayed there, but it is kind of slanted ground. So first come first serve gets the best spots. So the next day, if you do decide to camp there, you will instantly start your day with a long, long steep ascent. I believe it's anywhere in the ballpark from 1,000 feet to 1,500 feet. Um, I think closer to that 1,000 feet mark. It's just a very long, steep ascent. And this is kind of the first top. It's not the official top. You do continue climbing, but this top represents like the end of the very steeply graded stuff. So you'll start a little bit of two track stepping, mostly connector track to ultimately get into another portion of track. And this is the official summit of your cl first climb for the day. Um, now you'll start kind of bouncing around and descending ultimately. So you start getting into this more pseudo two track, single track type stuff. Just broad sweeping views of what you've been going through. It is just gorgeous up there. So take a moment, take a picture, take a video, just really enjoy yourself. And this will lead into another really beautiful portion called the Spicer Forest. The Spicer Forest, very well built up. There are small pockets of mud, but nothing that will really damper your pace or hurt your pace. Um, just really gorgeous forest. I think it was one of the most beautiful forests we had walked through. Again, personal opinion, preference here. So once you finish that portion, it will connect you into a three to four mile connector piece of road that junctions from gravel to paved. As you can see here, this is a farm road, so um, watch out for sheep. So this will bring you to your next ascent. Ascent, I apologize, I can't talk. <laughs> but this will bring you to your next ascent. And this mountain that you're climbing is a very popular mountain. And you continue along this walkway called the Skyland Walkway, and it is aptly named because you just have broad sweeping views of the entire countryside you walked through. I kept this piece of film in here because I just really love that poem. But you get broad sweeping views of the countryside that you were walking through, and then you also start getting picturesque views of Wellington. That is just the wind. It does start getting very windy once you get on the back side of this mountain, so be prepared for wind. I'd recommend, again, bringing a buff, some headphones, something that will like mitigate that sound. That's the first view of Wellington that you do get, and it is real. <laughs> For a lot of TA Southbounders, they'll feel like it's a mythical place, but it is in fact real. So this is the top proper of where you climb up to, and again, broad sweeping views of the coastline of Wellington, and you just get to soak it in. A lot of people take pictures there. It's a very popular tourist destination, so you can ask somebody to take a photo of you and your trail family, trail partner, whatever it may be. I'm not saying anything important there. It's just a cool piece of film. So you drop down this backside, and the backside is very, very, very windy. This is one of the highest wind tunnels we experienced. So again, recommendations, bring something to mitigate that wind noise. And you start a longer descent. It is more gradually um, graded than your descent earlier in the day. There are a couple steps. It is true North, North Island, New Zealand flavor. And once you finish that portion of the track, the most of the rest of your day is this kind of connector, pseudo bike path to two track. It's this weird kind of connector piece through Wellington. Wellington's a very built up city in New Zealand but also it has all these long parks as you see here and it does its best to connect you from kind of pavement walking into these parks but when it does this you're doing a lot of micro ups and downs you're no longer climbing thousand feet two thousand feet that you are earlier in the day but you are doing a lot of these like 100 200 300 foot climbs that are very very steep so get prepared for that that's going to be a lot of the flavor of Wellington and you got broad sweeping views. I'm pointing out to where the ferry service is. A lot of hikers will catch these ferries across the strait um, to get to the South Island, but that's a future you problem for now. You still got a lot of roller coasters to do. So it puts you through these botanical gardens of Wellington. Very pretty. Again, really check your maps. It's very confusing. There are so many twists and turns through here that it's hard to stay on the official quote unquote red line because like there's all these micro twists and turns. So just stay aware. You will summit out on another kind of smaller climb up here at the top of the botanical gardens and it does this kind of large U. So there's this tramway up here that you can explore, kind of be a little tourist, but if you're Jones for town, you'd stop, start the descent and drop back down towards the city. 
beautiful gardens. There's a restaurant over there right, that you can stop at if you so desire. There's water accessible. You're in a city. A lot of stuff is easily right at hand. So you go through this little cemetery and this will deposit you into the official city of Auckland. Again, I'm not going to talk too much on amenities here. <laughs> There's so many options. It's a huge city. Hotels, motels, Airbnb, restaurants. You can change out your gear. There's everything right at your fingertips. So once you walk through the city, you connect into kind of the marina walk, what I called, and it just hugs the kind of that waterway. And it's just very beautiful. Um, it's a heavily touristed area again. So watch out for bikes, watch out for scooters, but it is really, really pretty through there. That wind is just sweeping hard though off that water. We might've caught it out a windy day, but we believe, at least I've heard that Wellington is one of the windiest cities. So just be prepared for that. So once you finish that walkway along the water, it brings you into more roller coasters. So these little walkways are color oriented and the TA route kind of follows one for the majority of the time, which I believe is the Southern walkway. And it kind of just bounces along through these parks that run the length of Wellington. Very cool parks. Um, I don't believe you're allowed to camp in there, but again, you're at a city, you have many options. So these are the ascents and descents I was talking about that are just steeply, steeply up and down. So the very last climb of your day will be up to the peak of Mount Victoria. You actually don't peak out on it fully. I did because I went the wrong way. That trig, as I talked about in previous videos, marks the summit, but don't actually go up there. You follow a two track down and this will bring you into the last road portion of ultimately the North Island, the last road portion of the TA out there. So you get to see the coastline and you end up in this very small community at the very end that is accessible by Uber, taxi, what have you, if you are trying to get back into the full city of Wellington. And this is the rock that signifies that you're done, at least done with the North Island. Um, North Island and South Island, as I'll talk once I start coming out with those South Island videos, very different. They almost feel like completely two different through hikes. I kept this piece of film in here because I got the entire North Island done with one pair of shoes. So I wanted to show it is possible. Not recommended. I would switch them out. The Toraros will be quite hard if you're wearing flip-flops, quote unquote flip-flops. So that's the rock. Touch it, take a photo, take some videos, enjoy yourself. So I kept this film in here too because I wanted to go through some of the logistics and I'm counting them on my fingers in this scene right here that you have to do in Wellington. You have to get a boat ride across the strait to a town called Picton on the South Island and then you have to coordinate a place to stay in Picton. They do have holiday parks. Then you have to coordinate another boat from the town of Picton up to the start of Queen Charlotte track. And then you also just have to coordinate a permit. Again, there's a lot of logistics you have to do for ultimately all of the TA. North Island was more concentrated with the amount you had to do, but I wanted to point that out that you should, many hikers use this as a hub to get prepared for the next adventure. Those are the kind of the parks that I was mentioning that run through Wellington and why you're doing so many roller coaster stuff. So I kept these scenes long just to kind of show you the flavor of New, of not New Zealand, I apologize, Wellington itself, really cool city. It was Magpie and I's personal favorite city slash town that we experienced in New Zealand. Again, it's personal opinion, preference, some others may have not, but we wanted to keep that in there. There is a lot of great food, easily accessible. Again, motels, hotels, Airbnb. I would recommend booking in advance in Wellington if you want the cheaper options. I would book anywhere from five days to a week in advance because those do go fast since it is a very busy tourist hub. And yeah, you can just get ready um, for the South Island. There are a lot of logistics to do, but the South Island is going to spoil you, spoil you, spoil you. It is going to be amazing.